I am very happy uh, to be part, part of this uh, International Space Science Quiz, which is being organized by Science Education Research Foundation, Ahmedabad. And I have been invited to give a talk in this uh, uh, program by Professor Haryom Vast, for which I am uh, thankful to him. Uh, the title of like my talk is The Enigmatic Sun. Uh, so uh, let me begin with uh, asking this question, why the sun is so important to study? We all know that uh, in the night sky, there are uh, different uh, stars seen in the uh, night sky. Uh, they are of different colors, uh, which signify temperature sizes, uh, but they are very faint and point-like uh, objects, even with the large telescope because of their large distances. On the other hand, uh, the sun, which is a very average star uh, uh, because uh, it is uh, very close to us so one can see the surface de details and various uh, dynamical processes physical processes happening which can be observed even with the modest telescopes uh, we also know that the sun is our uh, you know the governor of our solar system and this is source of all forms of energy it sustains life on earth dry weather and climate. So some, some of these are the reasons for which uh, we need to observe because the sun influences the uh, various uh, aspects of our uh, uh, weather and climate, also the uh, space surrounding us. There are different types of manifestations of, of the sun. It is in quiet phase, active phase, and at times it becomes very explosive where uh, in short time scales, uh, explosive events are seen, which drive the space weather and also affect the planetary environments. Apart from that, the, uh, the sun uh, uh, presents a cosmic laboratory for various atomic, nuclear, neutrino physics uh, uh, problems, the high temperature plasma physics, magneto hydrodynamics, and also for testing of general theory of relativity. So, because of these reasons, the uh, uh, sun has been observed with the uh, interest over centuries. What do we observe? We essentially observe the, uh, the uh, we know that sun is a spherical uh, ball of hot gases, very high temperature gases. Uh, it shows up as a uh, pro uh, disk projected into the sky. And what we see is basically the, the in white light, uh, images, we see the photosphere, the outer layer of the, or which is called the skin of this, the sun, you know, beyond which uh, the density, temperature drastically change and uh, we cannot see uh, by ordinary means. So the photosphere has been observed uh, historically by various means visually and also uh, by sketches by, of the uh, image taken by the telescope when it was invented in 1610. Later on, photographic imaging became available in 1845 and uh, and then spectroscopy in 1859, after which a uh, lot of new science of uh, sun uh, was uh, discovered. Uh, on the sun, we normally, uh, you know, in a uh, image of the sun, we normally see dark spots. We also see limb darkening as we go from the central part of the solar disk to the limb or the outer boundary of the disk, we see there is a darkening, which is called limb darkening. Essentially, it scans out different layers of the sun as we go from the central part to the, uh, we can see to the deeper layers while we see the shallower layers at the limb, so which are at lower temperature. Uh, this photosphere essentially emits uh, uh, you know, light of different wavelengths, uh, which uh, the flux of which with wavelength is plotted in this diagram. One can see uh, the spectrum, basically the spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum of the sun, uh, extending from short wavelength part ultraviolet, in fact, below that will be X-ray, which has very low fluxes, onwards to the visible bands and then infrared the uh, wavelengths. And one sees uh, uh, the flux varies like this and one can fit a you know, spectral you know profile which corresponds to the black body radiation at temperature of around 
to be 700 kilo uh, kelvins. So uh, one can say that sun emits uh, uh, the light uh, almost like a black body of uh, that temperature, uh, uh, you know, where the fluxes drops to the longer uh, wavelength and also at the shorter wavelengths. And uh, it has a peak in the visible to which our eyes are sensitive. So uh, we mostly see the sun in the wavelengths corresponding to the visible band. Uh, in this slide, uh, uh, we uh, uh, present uh, the general properties of the sun, which we obtain from simple visual observations and uh, certain physical principles, which are shown in the brackets here, which include the angular diameter of the sun, which is half a degree, 32 arc minutes, which is directly by visual observation, and from Kepler's third law and parallax of uh, inner planets like Mercury and Venus, the distance has been obtained as around 15 crore kilometers, which is 1.5 times the power 8 kilometers, defined as one astronomical unit, and light takes around 8.3 minutes to travel, uh, a photon will take uh, from the sun to reach the earth uh, around 8 minutes and uh, 18 seconds or so. The radius uh, from simple geometry we obtain as 700,000 kilometer on the average, uh, because we know uh, Earth is uh, revolving around the sun in elliptical orbit, so distance will be changing, but average this uh, radius is this much, similarly the distance will be changing uh, in the orbital rotation, and 700 kilometers corresponds to roughly 109 Earth radii, so one can fit around 109 Earths along the equator of the sun, so it is so big. Uh, in fact, the volume will contain 109 cubed, uh, more than a million Earths inside the Sun. The mass of the Sun can be obtained from the, uh, the gravitational and centrifugal forces, uh, balance of these forces, and also Kepler uh, law, and that turns out to be around 333,000 Earth masses, which corresponds to 2 into 10 to the power 33 grams. The density can be obtained 1.44 grams per cc because we know the mass and the radius. Temperature already we uh, mentioned that uh, it is around 5778 uh, degree Kelvin, which is also obtained from the uh, Venus displacement law. The solar uh, radiance, irradiance, to total solar irradiance, that means the total solar flux integrated over the entire, uh, all the wavelengths is around 1367 watts per meter square uh, at the uh, above the atmosphere of the earth from the space borne observatories and from here from this uh, tsi we can find out the luminosity of the sun uh, which is 3.85 10 to the power 26 watts the average magnetic field like our earth has magnetic field the sun also has a magnetic field and as a average is one two three gauss which we obtained from polarimetry and Zeeman effects. Uh, Zeeman effect basically uh, related to the magnetic field uh, uh, of on a spectral line. Composition of the sun is 74% uh, is hydrogen. Sun is composed of 74% uh, by uh, of hydrogen, 24% of helium, and 2% other elements by mass. This is obtained from spectroscopy. And sun rotates around uh, around its uh, north-south uh, <coughs> axis uh, over uh, you know uh, 28 days to 37 days as we go from equator to poles using different features and also from spectroscopy, uh, uh, which basically tells the sun is gaseous, so it doesn't rotate like a solid body. Uh, it has a differential rotation. Age of the sun is roughly 4.6 into 10 to the power 9 years, 4.6 billion years, obtained from meteorites and theoretical means. <clears throat> uh, so this shows the anatomy of the sun from inside to outside. The central part, the core, which is roughly one-fourth of the sun's radius, which the radius is 700,000 kilometers of that, one, uh, 140,000 kilometer is the core. Uh, the dense, uh, roughly half of the solar mass is contained in this because of very heavy gravitational attractive forces uh, such that the density here is very high 
roughly 160 grams per cc and uh, uh, the temperature of central part is very high is around 15 million degree kelvin the pressure is also very high uh, so because of these the conditions are good enough to trigger the nuclear fusion reactions uh, we know that hydrogen is the most abundant hydrogen is basically proton so proton proton uh, chain uh, is uh, triggered nuclear fusion they combine together overcoming the coulomb forces and a net pp reaction turns out to that four protons they join to one helium nucleus eject out two positrons two uh, electron neutrinos and two gamma ray carrying roughly 26.7 million electron volts and in this process the sun is losing per reaction per pp chain reaction the mass loss is roughly 4.8 10 to the power minus 32 corresponding to the mass of the four protons and one helium difference of that is converted into energy and to correspond to the total solar luminosity of 3.8 into 10 to the power 26 watts the total mass loss can be estimated as 6 into 10 to the power 12 grams per second the sun is losing enormous amount of mass because of the conversion of uh, hydrogen into helium at the core uh, which is uh, given out as the energy which we receive from the sun and 98 percent of this energy is carried by gamma ray photons and uh, or kinetic energy of nuclei and only two percent by neutrinos so what happens to the photons and neutrinos which are produced inside the core they pass through the uh, from the uh, core this is the core they pass uh, uh, you know once they are generated they pass through the interior of the the sun which can be divided broadly in two parts radiative zone and convective zone the radiative zone in uh, you know the dense density this is the plot of the density into in the radiative zone the density uh, decreases in the radiative zones and uh, as compared to the core uh, from roughly 20 here 20 grams per cc to 0.2 gram per cc and the temperature uh, in the radiative zone uh, from here to here drops from 7 million to 2 million degree so temperature drop is still very high so basically in this uh, uh, region the photons pass through because the density is still very high temperature is very high they actually interact with the nuclei which are present in this uh, medium uh, and then they are uh, absorbed re-emitted and get scattered and in that process they take a lot of time the photons take a lot of time to cross through the radiative zone uh, in this uh, various kinds of interactions which uh, happen here beyond that so th this is basically that uh, the energy you know carried by gamma ray is basically um, uh, propagated by the radiation process while later on once uh, <clears throat> they come to the edge of the outer boundary of the radiative zone the temp uh, density drops rapidly temperature also drops rapidly the temperature uh, re reduces uh, greatly so that atoms are formed and these atoms uh, basically at the at the boundary of the radiative zone they absorb photon energy and they get heated and uh, outer uh, layer the see the temperature drops so basically because of the temperature gradient the convection currents are formed which carry the parcel of gases from the inner part to the outer surface uh, of the sun and in that process they lose their energy to the outer layers in convective uh, you know uh, uh, process they lose their energy and this is a much faster uh, uh, method by which the energy is transferred from the bottom of the convection zone to the surface of the sun okay so so essentially these uh, uh, these uh, informations we obtain from solar standard models which are basically constructed using mathematical formalism so essentially the solar in the interior is uh, can, can consists of the central core radiative zone and the convective zone above which uh, uh, we have the photosphere the thin skin of the sun which we normally see and uh, <clears throat> the at the top of the convection zone we 
we see this photosphere and uh, uh, we already uh, showed you the picture of the photosphere above the photosphere uh, you can see uh, these are the various components of the solar outer solar atmosphere uh, chromosphere transition region and corona which uh, are uh, uh, lying above the photosphere uh, one can see that above the photosphere the temperature uh, keeps reducing comes to a minimum in the chromosphere somewhere in the mid uh, chromosphere or so and then it starts rising up suddenly uh, in a very narrow zone which is called the transition region transition region is here i think this arrow got shifted and then beyond the transition region the temperature keeps rising to more than 3 million degree kelvin into the corona outer corona and density also as you can see that uh, from the interior the density keeps decreasing and it drops very rapidly in the transition region which is very narrow roughly 100 kilometer or so and then it uh, keeps decreasing into the uh, into the uh, corona so the basically one can see that the uh, chromosphere is roughly thousand times uh, less dense compared to uh, the photosphere so it is much thousand times less bright uh, so it's very faint to see unless photosphere uh, uh, light of the photosphere is blocked somehow similarly corona cannot be seen ordinarily because of uh, a million time uh, fainter uh, you know light coming from corona as compared to the photosphere so these are more difficult uh, chromosphere transition region and corona are more difficult uh, uh, layers of the solar atmosphere uh, uh, in order to observe similarly the uh, interior you know underneath the photosphere is more difficult to see so these are uh, essentially this uh, very uh, briefly i am uh, telling various layers and the light which comes from the sun uh, i showed you the black body spectrum of the sun from gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet visible to radio wavelengths infrared radio uh, of different wavelengths you know radar wavelengths uh, and uh, fm tv short wave and so on am so these are all radio microwave and radio uh, wavelengths uh, part of which you see is you know the visible bat, uh, band uh, which can um, using a prism or grating can be shown as consisting of violet to red wavelengths uh, you know this uh, spectrum of the visible spectrum of the sun has violet to red essentially 4000 angstrom to around 7000 angstrom in which we see dark uh, <clears throat> spectral lines corresponding to various elements which are present on the sun so these are called the fraunhofer absorption line photospheric uh, absorption lines which are the thumbprints of the elements which are present on the sun so these this is the spectrum and using uh, some of these lines one can uh, get various uh, uh, physics about the solar uh, photosphere so essentially the photons coming from the sun they are the messenger which provide you information about the solar uh, structure unfortunately only this uh, narrow band of light which is the visible light can come to the ground through the atmosphere of the earth uh, without any hindrance and uh, we have optical telescopes by using which we can see the uh, the sun or for that matter any other cosmic objects similarly on longer wavelength the radio wavelengths can come directly to the ground uh, even uh, the clouds don't pose much problem for the propagation although visible can be obstructed by clouds the radio waves can come to the ground and using radio telescopes again one can observe the sun other and other cosmic objects but on the other hand if you see the high energy uh, photons of gamma ray, X-rays, uh, ultraviolet, uh, they, as they cross through the Earth's atmosphere, they get absorbed at different uh, layers of the Earth, uh, Earth's atmosphere, and cannot come to the ground. And in order to study the sun and other objects, we need to fly instruments on planes, aeroplanes or balloons that going to different heights, rockets, but of course they have short life but satellites nowadays can go much above in the Earth's atmosphere 
and the instruments can all the time on continuous basis they can uh, observe the, uh, the, the the sun in x-ray gamma rays and so on so this is the observational uh, thing that uh, we have different windows and uh, uh, for high energy uh, that means short wavelength uh, photons one needs to go to space so that is the difference sun can it is important to study the sun in different wavelengths, but uh, it all of these things cannot be done from the ground. Only optical and radio uh, windows are available. Or for other, we have to have space-borne instruments. So, what do we observe? Once we have a good uh, observing tools, uh, we normally can uh, obtain high-resolution images of the sun's uh, photosphere. Uh, this is actually observing the photosphere it uh, better uh, resolution showing fine structures which is possible for the sun but not for the other stars one can see that dark sunspots are comprised of uh, umbra and penumbra a darker umbra and bright, uh, fainter penumbra which is consisting of fibril like structures which basically correspond to magnetic lines of forces and sunspots are immersed in sea of granular structures which are signature of the convection which we talked earlier the large convection currents they break into smaller convection currents uh, cells and these are the granules which have sizes of thousand kilometers or so and uh, on the other hand the sunspots are having sizes of roughly 2000 uh, to 100000 kilometers so they can be very large much larger than our earth and they have lifetimes of few hours to several weeks and in these sunspot penumbra we see radial flows which are called evershade flow which was discovered from India Kodai Canal Observatory in 1909 uh, by John Evershade. Apart from evershade flow we can uh, use the Zeeman effect uh, which shows uh, magnetic field. Zeeman effect is basically that in presence of uh, magnetic fields or spectral lines which we discussed from over the spectral lines they get split into triplets and measuring the uh, separation uh, between these triplets one can measure the magnetic field simply by uh, the, uh, the you know the splitting uh, delta lambda m is magnetic splitting that magnetic is splitting is directly proportional to magnetic field strength so once we know them uh, 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 from a spectrum, uh, you know, spectral shift uh, of these lines, we know the, uh, the uh, delta M, we can directly get uh, magnetic field B, where lambda is the wavelength of the, that spectral line, which we know from the spectroscopic means. Uh, and uh, these are some constants. So using this, we can obtain magnetic field. And also another uh, property is the uh, magnetic you know polarization of uh, Zeeman polarization of magnetic lines can be used to measure weaker magnetic field away from the sunspot maximum magnetic field in sunspots have been observed around 60 to 50 gauss so they are very strongly magnetized object and because of that they look uh, darker as compared to the ambient medium and on the, nowadays using solar magnetogram uh, magnetograph facility the magnetic maps of the uh, sun can be constructed on a routine basis uh, this is the white light or photospheric image this is the corresponding image in uh, of the magnetic fluxes on the sun and one can see that sunspots they are basically highly uh, you know magnetized regions on the solar photosphere uh, and they have uh, essentially bipolar structures uh, that white and dark essentially shows you the northern polarity southern uh, polarity like a bar magnet and there are uh, it also shows the uh, distribution of magnetic flux over the entire sun and this is the doppler gram uh, corresponding to the same image where the doppler shift of the spectral lines has been used to obtain from the blue shift and red shift of lines depending on the uh, uh, the parcel of gas is moving towards you or away from you on the solar photosphere one can get from the difference one can make the doppler gram so these are three aspects of the solar 
uh, images which we can see from uh, physics, uh, you know, um, which we employ on certain instrumentation. Using these sunspots, we can track them and we, we can uh, obtain the solar rotation um, and we find that sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. It is faster at the equator and slower at the higher uh, latitudes from 25 days to 37 days as you go there. Uh, so this is a differential rotation of the sun. It's a gaseous uh, ball as we discussed. So the differential rotation combined with the magnetic field of the sun, they uh, lead to various types of activities on the sun uh, and then uh, also lead to various types of explosive behavior on the sun, which we'll be seeing later. How do we probe this, uh, uh, you know, so far we had been talking about the outer atmosphere, also observing photosphere, but how do we uh, know about the interior of the sun? Uh, we uh, mentioned that uh, uh, because the solar interior is hidden um, from our view uh, due to the presence of a very thick material, uh, high opacity medium, the photosphere and below. So uh, one tool is essentially observing the neutrinos which are produced uh, uh, inside the core of the sun. The neutrinos are fundamental particles uh, considered to be massless. Uh, and they are highly, are very weakly interacting be, uh, particles. So, uh, um, you know, unlike the gamma, uh, gamma ray photons, when they uh, travel from the core outward, they interact and uh, uh, they cannot come directly, while the neutrinos which are produced in the core, they can uh, directly come with high speed. Uh, one can estimate the number of uh, neutrinos from, uh, you know, theoretical models uh, considering the temperature, number is basically proposed uh, very much uh, dependent on the temperature of the core and one can estimate the numbers, uh, you know, produced per second inside the core and also how much we receive, I should be receiving at the distance from, you know, at the distance at our earth. So, so that is one astronomical unit. So roughly, 6 into 10 to the power 14 neutrinos are crossing per square meter per second at our location of the earth. So detectors have been made uh, starting from 1960s which have been, uh, you know, which uh, consist of uh, very large uh, reservoirs of different types of uh, medium like water, heavy water, gallium or, you know, different types, uh, types of uh, a material in order to see the neutrinos as they cross through by some kind of rare, uh, uh, you know, side uh, uh, reactions which are uh, observed in these neutrino observatories and uh, uh, many different types of uh, neutrino observatories have been uh, uh, made uh, in uh, Japan, Europe and uh, Canada. Uh, most of these observatories uh, had faced the uh, one uh, problem that the number of the neutrinos which they received or detected in these observatories, they were three times less than the estimated numbers. So estimated numbers uh, were more uh, while they detected three times less flux. So uh, it was felt that uh, probably the solar standard model needs some correction, they are in trouble. Or another alternative could be that maybe the new, uh, we do not uh, understand the neutrinos properly uh, about their properties. In fact, much later, some detectors uh, 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 to, uh, you know, showed that the neutrinos oscillate between three flavors, the electron neutrinos, which are produced in the sun, then uh, muon uh, neutrinos and uh, tau neutrinos. And these are actually observed in the Earth's atmosphere and also some lab experiments. So we uh, note that uh, the neutrinos are produced in the sun. They're all electron neutrinos, which were uh, uh, essentially, uh, uh, you know, detected uh, uh, by the neutron neutrino observatories. But uh, uh, probably uh, it, it, it was suggested that uh, the electron neutrinos were the ones which are uh, produced inside the core as they propagate in the from the sun to the earth. They probably change their uh, form 
from the uh, electron neutrino to other forms of neutrinos. As a result, uh, these were not initially observed, only this was observed. So, we actually accounts for the observed deficiency of or deficit of the elect electron neutrinos. So, this uh, essentially requires that, uh, you know, uh, this kind of oscillation in three different pairs requires that neutrinos are not uh, massless. They have finite uh, non-zero masses uh, 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 and uh, so essentially there was uh, some problem with our early understanding of neutrinos. So, uh, there was nothing wrong with the solar models, but uh, neutrinos as they travel from sun to earth, they change their form. This was the elegant resolution of neutrino deficit problem. Uh, other other uh, method uh, also came to probe the solar interior at, around the same time as the neutrino measurements were being done. That was in terms of oscillations of the sun, which was discovered uh, by Doppler shift of photospheric lines around 1960. And these oscillations, as you see uh, from this uh, photospheric image, Doppler gram image, that it, you know, the material is all the time coming up and down, giving blue and red shift of certain lines. Uh, the oscillation uh, peaked around five minute uh, period or frequency of these oscillations, which we observe on the solar photosphere is at three millihertz level. But they have very small amplitude of a few tens of meters per second at a distance of, uh, you know, 15 pro kilometer. Uh, these are so small that we require very highly sophisticated instruments to observe the solar oscillation. It was actually later on uh, uh, proved that these oscillations corresponds to, correspond to millions of modes of oscillations. Uh, their superposition leads to observed fluctuations and each of these modes are tra trapped in different cavities at uh, different depths inside the sun. They go to different depths and get reflected at the photosphere. And as they travel inside the interior, they carry information about the inter internal density, temperature, uh, their structure and dynamics. So essentially helio seismology is based on precise measurement of these modes of oscillation, their amplitude and frequency. But that requires long time series uninterrupted solar observations. Uh, which is not possible from single uh, station on the ground. We require a network of observatories around the globe, around the earth or observing from space uh, by uh, spacecrafts at certain locations from where they can observe the sun continuously. From these observations, uh, people have uh, made, uh, you know, essentially the measurements about uh, the estimations of uh, the density and temperature and uh, and other properties and in these two uh, plots we uh, we show you the difference uh, of the density uh, the, uh, sound speed which is a function of temperature uh, of inside the sun uh, from uh, from the core to uh, one solar radius the difference between the helioseismic inverse uh, you know inference uh, uh, with the standard model. And these differences are very small, very close to zero, roughly 0.4 percent errors you can see uh, at, as you go from the core to the uh, to the radius. So, the differences are very, very small. That means uh, helioseismology validates the standard models and that also was one aspect because of which neutrino uh, uh, deficit problem was uh, resolved because uh, uh, there it was uh, the possibility of uh, problem with the standard model was ruled out because of very close correspondence between the solar standard model and the helioseismic uh, inferences of the density and temperature. There are some regions where you see large departures near the solar core and bottom of convection zone and also the surface where more physics is required to make better fit. Uh, with the uh, model uh, between model and helioseismology. So, it's, it essentially it says that helioseismology provides a very good test of theoretical models 
except certain loca uh, locations inside the interior. <clears throat> Other important result uh, which uh, we obtained from helioseismology about the uh, uh, rotation inside the so in, in the solar interior, we know at the photosphere uh, the differential rotation tells you that the near equator the uh, uh, rotation rate uh, rotation time is 25 days and as you go to the poles is 30 days and uh, more so there is a differential rotation as we go inside the interior the differential rotation persists to certain depth very close to the base of convection zone we see that uh, uh, they all merge together and then <clears throat> under in the radiative zone the sun rotates as a solid body is a rigid ro rotation uh, so that ha happens at a certain uh, layer which is called tachocline in which there is a transition from differential rotation to the rigid rotation so this is a major discovery from the helioseismology and uh, uh, it turns out you know most of these are uh, uh, results are obtained from uh, uh, p mode uh, detection of the sun there is a pressure and gravity uh, they are the two uh, restoring forces they correspond to uh, to uh, sound waves like p modes and gravity modes which are mostly contained within the near the central part uh, recent uh, People have been trying to detect G mode with a lot of, you know, there are still lots of uh, problems. This is one of, of the outstanding problems of solar physics to detect G modes because they have very low amp amplitudes at the observing uh, surface, they decay by the surface. But some indications are there uh, from uh, some recent, uh, you know, studies that core rotates four times faster than the radiative envelope. And the in analogy with the helioseismology now people are uh, extending uh, the technique to other star which is called asteroseismology in order to infer the internal structure of uh, um, other star with sun sun like star uh, from their oscillation frequency and spectra so these are some of the things related to the interior now let us come back to the exterior observing the chromosphere as we discussed our chromosphere is hotter than the photosphere around 10,000 degrees, but it is very, very, very faint. So unless the photosphere is uh, blocked, like in this uh, uh, image, this is total solar eclipse of 11th August 1999, when sun's photosphere is blocked. For a short time, we see these red uh, uh, flame-like structures corresponding to the chromosphere jutting out, you know, above the photosphere, this uh, highly regular, you know, we, we talk about various uh, sizes, thicknesses, but uh, you can see that they are highly non-uniform and there is not a constant uh, thickness uh, related to the photosphere, chromosphere or any other layer. And uh, for a very short time when uh, this chromospheric layer is uh, uh, observed, uh, one can take the spectrum of the chromosphere, which is called the flash spectrum of the solar chromosphere, which shows you uh, the, you know that uh, is a bright spectrum has bright uh, spectral lines unlike the photosphere where you have dark Fraunhofer line in in chromosphere because of its higher temperature they look look brighter so they are emission lines not absorption lines corresponding to the gases which are available in the chromosphere uh, uh, some lines are very intense in chromosphere like H alpha six five six nanometer or 6563 angstrom uh, so uh, these lines can be used to observe the solar chromosphere on a uh, uh, those days also when the eclipse doesn't occur so what is done that optical filters have been built very precise filters which uh, block most of the light coming from the photosphere and also from the chromosphere except for uh, uh, corresponding to this particular uh, line coming, the spectral line. And using that, one can get this kind of uh, <clears throat> image corresponding to the solar chromosphere, showing lots of structure, uh, apart from not just the sunspot, dark sunspot, but also some bright and dark uh, filament-like structures, which can 
uh, you know, with high resolution, one can see uh, such structures corresponding to the ribbon-like uh, features which we see in the chromosphere, but not in the photosphere. And uh, when they go toward the edge of the sun, they look like bright prominences as they are seen in the against the disk, the disk they look dark. So these are some of the features which we see in the chromosphere. Above the chromosphere, we have transition region which emits in ultraviolet and extreme ultraviolet because of even higher temperature than the uh, chromosphere in roughly a million degree Kelvin. And in that uh, kind of temperature, all the elements get ionized and they emit uh, high energy photons which cannot come to the ground due to the absorption in the atmosphere of the earth. Uh, so the certain instruments can uh, go to space and observe, make images in ultraviolet. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, this TR uh, transition region, we don't see during the eclipses because very thin, but we can see, uh, you know, when the, the photosphere is completely blocked by the moon, and also chromosphere is also blocked. We see the long, uh, uh, large scale structure of the solar corona, uh, which is kind of obtained by integrating large number of images taken at different exposures. Nowadays, of course, on, from the ground also, one can see uh, the solar corona uh, by artificial solar e e eclipses from the ground and also from space on a routine basis. So, so apart from that, uh, the solar corona, uh, coronal spectrum also shows coronal lines, uh, you know, which are in the emission lines which are there. And some of these emission lines like iron 10, iron uh, 14, these are corresponding to highly ionized, uh, you know, iron uh, uh, atom, which are produced because of very high temperature. In fact, this high temperature is inferred from the fact that these lines require uh, more than 2 million degrees to form. These are basically called forbidden lines because on the laboratories, they are very difficult to, to produce. These are forbidden. Uh, that means unless you have very high vacuum, very high, you know, low densities and very high temperature, uh, these do not form. So these observation of these lines basically convey to us that the solar corona is uh, very hot more than 2 uh, million uh, degree Kelvin. And why the corona is heated to million degrees? This is one of the outstanding problems in astrophysics because heat cannot flow from the ground, from the photosphere because it is at a lower temperature. Uh, it cannot uh, uh, heat the corona. Uh, so what uh, uh, explains the coronal heating to million degrees? This is one of the major problem. Uh, there are various mechanisms which have been proposed in terms of magnetohydrodynamic waves and magnetic reconnection uh, from flaring, micro flares and nano flares. We'll discuss that. The images of the corona apart from the image which you saw earlier can also be obtained because of high uh, temperature it emits in, in X-rays and uh, other emission lines which can be used to make the images from space on a regular basis and one can make such images which are obtained from Solar Dynamics Observatory. This is from a Yoko Space Born Instrument and we see lots of structures which were not seen, uh, you know, because in solar eclipses you block these things, only outer structure you see, but during, using X-ray and emission line for, you know, in forbidden and uh, other uh, highly ionized uh, elements, one can see lots of structures corresponding to um, various active regions uh, corresponding to various sunspots and so on on the uh, on the solar corona and many things were discovered like coronal hole was discovered uh, from the space uh, you know where uh, solar winds are produced where high high speed uh, particle emission take place from the sun which are termed as solar wind they was uh, uh, propagate into the space from these regions. So these are some of the aspects which uh, have become possible only from space-based observations. 
So uh, we observe uh, different types of explosive events uh, taking place on the sun. Uh, we had been talking that sun is magnetized object and it is uh, differentially rotate, uh, you know, uh, rotating. So these uh, lead to, uh, you know, certain conditions on the sun in certain uh, locations where uh, suddenly in, in an abrupt manner, huge amount of uh, uh, energy is liberated in terms of uh, explosive enhancement uh, of emission over the entire electromagnetic spectrum, all the way from radio, optical, X-ray, gamma rays and such brightenings are called the flares, solar flares, uh, which uh, basically uh, release energies, very large energies, and they can happen from few minutes to several hours in major events. One can see here the flare brightening. Some of them are also accompanied with mass ejections. So there are many outstanding questions related to flares. They are modeling. Uh, they require multi wavelength observations of flare in order to understand this uh, process. There are questions about the storage of magnetic energy in uh, localized regions, which is required to fuel the uh, flares and why, how and where this energy is released. This also remains a major uh, problem. A lot of research is going on. There are, uh, uh, you know, other eruptive uh, processes related with the uh, filaments which we discussed, they remain in balance for some time, but suddenly they erupt and they pump out huge amount of mass into the uh, space uh, away from the sun, uh, which uh, essentially is again one of the explosive phenomena which uh, is observed on the sun, which leads uh, uh, to at times to coronal mass ejections. These are another form of eruptive phenomena which we observe on the sun. Uh, and these coronal mass ejections were observed only during the space era, uh, somewhere in 1971 by uh, Skylab and, uh, you know, some other uh, instruments. Uh, <clears throat> by blocking the photosphere and around that, one can actually see how they propagate and at times they can uh, be coming towards the earth, uh, you know, they, they propagate with high speeds, you know, some of them have very low speed, but higher events, higher uh, speed events will be up to 2500 kilometer per second. They eject huge amount of masses, their kinetic energy is comparable to flares, and when they come to, to the earth, they can interact with the, the earth in a variety of way. So, let us, uh, uh, you know, discuss one other important aspect of the uh, sol uh, solar uh, physics, which is called activity cycle of the sun. When uh, sunspots are flares or CME, their numbers are plotted with time. Uh, one see a cyclic behavior in the activity. Uh, the sunspot numbers here, the y-axis sunspot number, and this is years which are plotted. One can see that number of sunspots is not constant that keeps uh, going up and down with a time period of roughly 11 years. So there is an 11 year activity cycle, which is uh, shown by the number of sunspots. Similarly, if you plot the flare and CME, they sim show similar activity cycle. There was a time uh, from 1645 to around 1715, where no sunspots were seen. This is called Maunder Minimum, and the Maunder Minimum corresponds to little ice age on our uh, Earth, where the poles of Northern Pole uh, and Southern poles they increase in their size. The sun actually uh, affects the uh, uh, affects our uh, weather and climate to uh, to a you know indirect manner. One can say not not directly. So unless uh, we have very large uh, period of inactivity, probably doesn't affect so much. Okay. So there are other types of long-term cycles which are present on the sun. When you plot the positions of the sunspot, their latitudes uh, on the solar uh, hemisphere, they seem to uh, uh, pro uh, progress, you know, after their birth. The, the sites of birth of sunspot, they seem to travel to the equator and it uh, shows a butterfly-like diagram 
corresponding to the various maxima here. One can uh, uh, like 12, 13 cycle, 14 cycle. Uh, you know, these are various cycles which we have, you know, starting from 17, 15 onwards, cycle 0, cycle 1 and so on. So, so corresponding different cycles, one can see the butterfly diagram, the uh, interesting motion of sunspots formation region towards the pole as the cycle progresses. And the same thing is shown here in the magnetogram, uh, using magnetogram which have become available from 1975. One sees uh, interesting travel of uh, uh, polarities to the pole and also corresponding to the sunspot polarities, they travel towards the equator, cancelling the magnetic field in the equator, equatorial region, also cancelling uh, or dominating the polar magnetic field. Somewhere here, you can see that negative polar polarity fluxes are coming and then they cancel any positive fluxes which were there before. And so there is a time when there is a, a zero magnetic field at the pole and then it becomes positive and then negative and so on. So there is a magnetic cycle of 22 years uh, corresponding to two of the activity, sunspot activity cycle. So these basically tell poleward and equatorward flux motions and depending on the uh, maximum and minimum phases, the sun uh, shows a change in its phase. Like these are the uh, images of the photosphere magnetograms and Doppler grams taken during the maximum phase and these are the ones taking the minimum phase. You can see the change that sun is very quiet during this uh, minimum activity period and similarly if you take the images obtained uh, from Yoko, uh, this is the solar x-ray, coronal x-ray, these are the photospheric thing and these are the coronal images and one can see the sun's phase changing from the maximum to the minimum phase from very bright to very dark. So sun changes its phase from the active phase to the quiet phase. And uh, uh, the sun's uh, corona essentially is high, uh, you know, highly uh, dynamic because it is very hot, it expands away from the sun and it pumps out a steady stream of coronal plasma away from the sun into the interplanetary medium, interplanetary space. And this is called the solar wind which consists of electrons, protons and helium, ions and heavier ions to a, a smaller extent and it fills up the entire interplanetary medium uh, uh, which basically also uh, has the speeds of around 400 km per second. There is a continuous stream has average speed of this but there are fast, uh, slow and fast uh, streams also present and these streams they move radially out along the magnetic field of spiral form because sun is rotating the sun's magnetic field acquires a spiral form like a garden is a sprinkler and uh, uh, the, the solar wind stream follow the magnetic field lines and interact with solar system objects in a variety of manner and solar wind of course U Ulysses spacecraft could go uh, along in this polar orbit measure the magnet uh, you know the velocity of the so solar wind it found that the speed of the solar wind is quite high uh, in the polar direction and quite low in the equatorial direction. So, so you know, the solar wind doesn't uh, propagate with the same speed, it is highly irregular. So, when these winds come in our vicinity, uh, our earth vicinity, they interact with the, the magnetic field of the earth, they, uh, the solar wind pressure uh, presses the day side of the magnetic field of the sun and stretches the nighttime uh, magnetic field. So it becomes instead of a simple bipolar structure, it takes, acquires a shape like this, which is a uh, essentially called a terrestrial magnetosphere. Uh, and uh, solar wind, uh, which are charged particles, they cannot cross the magnetic field lines easily. So they get diverted because of the magnetic field. Uh, of the earth and they directly cannot come to the ground and uh, endanger our life, but they can still go along these lines and uh, from the night uh, time of the magnetic tail, part of them can leap through and get into the earth's uh, northern, southern 
uh, hemisphere and produce auroras. The uh, CMEs which uh, are ejected, if they are directed toward the Earth, they produce some, some kind of uh, fluctuations in the magnetic field line and they create geomagnetic storm which uh, essentially creates disturbances uh, in the, uh, the system and uh, lead to the disabling of uh, satellites or even knock down, uh, knock out the electric power grids at high latitudes. Flares, for example, the explosive events which we discussed earlier, they correspond to high energy photons. They can cross through the, the lines. They don't bother about the lines. Unlike the ionized particles, they can pro, uh, pass through and ionize lead to a, uh, excess ionization of the Earth's atmosphere, which affects the uh, essentially the communication and drag of the uh, satellites and so on. So, hard X-rays, energetic particles, they can also damage the spacecraft and the instruments which they are carrying. Their radiation poses major concern for manned mission. Solar energetic particle lead to aurora, which we discussed earlier. Apart from that, the sun also emits radio, uh, you know, uh, wavelength uh, photons or, uh, you know, waves, which can uh, uh, essentially disrupt or uh, disturb the operation of GPS, uh, radars and other devices. So, one can see that uh, the activity in the sun, especially the solar wind and the streams of the solar wind and the flares and CMEs, which are produced uh, in explosive uh, phenomenon observed on the sun, they uh, can have, they have many practical applications uh, uh, for space missions and uh, also communications and satellites and so on. And that is why it is very important to study the sun and its activities. And a lot of efforts are being uh, put in order to understand these uh, explosive phenomenon and also uh, trying to forecast them so that advance warning can be given uh, to the space born instruments and the astronauts. Uh, the solar wind actually uh, keeps propagating in this solar system all the way to the outer boundaries where it uh, interacts with inter interstellar winds and uh, there is some kind of uh, heliosphere is uh, uh, formed, which is basically the sphere of influence of the sun uh, in which uh, the physics of uh, the sun or heliophysics uh, needs to be understood with the variety of observations. So th this is the planet, inner planet, uh, planetary system and uh, outer uh, regions. So this uh, heliosphere travels around the galactic center with high speed of around 200, uh, you know, it takes around 250 a million uh, uh, years to take one complete rotation. So, in that, uh, you know, the solar influence essentially is confined within this. Outside that, of course, this is the uh, domain of interstellar winds and interstellar medium. So, so this is essentially in a very brief, uh, uh, I have tried to explain variety of things related to the sun and its sphere of influence. Uh, this, this provides a summary that, uh, uh, you know, the multi-wavelength studies from ground to space, they provide three-dimensional structure of the sun's atmosphere. Optical wavelength, uh, wavelengths are used for photosphere, troposphere observation to uh, some extent. Uh, then magnetograms and dopplerograms are built uh, for studying the magnetic field and velocity related information. Ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet X-ray, they are up to, uh, coming from the solar transition region and corona, which require a space-based observation. Radio wavelengths are produced in chromosphere, corona, and interplanetary medium. So we require radio techniques for uh, observing these. So these are different techniques by which we study uh, the sun, the magnetic field, and its uh, interplay play uh, with solar differential rotation, rotation plays a major role in solar activity cycle and in uh, explosive solar phenomena. Neutrino physics, helioseismology provide important tools in probing the deep solar interior and they have helped in resolving the particle physics problem of neutrino deficiency. Magnetoseismology of corona is providing new results about the solar corona. We 
you know, the detection of the oscillations and waves in corona uh, because the plasma that, that is being carried out. Astro-seismology, I just very briefly mentioned that this is an extension of helioseismology technique to other stars which is providing information about structure, internal structure of other stars which are far away and there is no other method by which we can resolve them. So there are many more discoveries in store and uh, as the development uh, is in progress in ground and space borne instrumentation for in coming time. So here I think I'll uh, stop and uh, uh, I would like to acknowledge with thank uh, many figures which I have used and there are some of the animations which I have taken from various source sources. Uh, here I have just listed uh, uh, some books which can be referred to uh, by those who are interested in getting more detail because uh, I have uh, tried to cover uh, uh, lots of excitements of solar physics in, in, in this short uh, uh, talk. Uh, each uh, topic which I, you know, each slide in which uh, I discuss certain of certain aspects of the sun requires full lectures and or more series of lectures so is not possible. So those who are interested, uh, they can uh, uh, go through some of these books. So uh, 